Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be showing you guys a drum tutorial. This is a kind of a drum visual tutorial. This is from the Top Secret Drum Course of Basel, Switzerland. If you haven't ever heard of them, I have uh, links down to most of their popular videos and performances. I was able to meet them and definitely see a lot of them at the Virginia International Tattoo when I was on tour with my Fife and Drum Corps, uh, Colonial Innsbruck Fife and Drum Course. They're a great group of guys, very talented drummers that really have a traditional drumming background, but uh, bring up a lot of uh, modern drumming, which they call show drumming. So today I'm going to be showing you one of their uh, selections from their show from 2016 at the International Tattoo. Uh, I don't have any specific type of nickname for this type of piece, but it includes a lot of uh, stick twirls. It even has a rare one of those, except you actually catch the stick. And it has a lot of cool features that are quite challenging and took me a little while to master when I was studying their music but uh, without further ado this is the drumstick tutorial or hmm, stick visual that sh I'll be showing you all today. Okay so now that you're back so you see what the whole visual looks like. It's very high tempo comparatively to how I usually practice it. Uh, it's very fast, very upbeat. You have uh, to get everything perfect first try. You can't really correct your mistakes, especially if you're trying to do this in a performance or try and keep in time with their line. So this has two different sections that I break this down into. So first you have the So that is the first section. I will have a PDF to this uh, that you won't be able to download. You can comment below if you want the actual sheet music for this, but I'm going to have the music alongside just to help you guys. So this first section has the first beat. Uh, just take away a fa the fancy twirl. You just have a flam, da, 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 da. So it's all on the right. Flam, da, da, da. So you got to make sure that you get that flam in. Two sixteenths, those two eighths. Very simple beat. So now on your left hand, on the other hand, you have a underhand, overhand twirl is what I call it with your left. So keep in mind that I'm using traditional grip, not match grip. So that's the only way you can really perform this visual is if you're using uh, traditional grip. So stick comes under your wrist, then pretty much back over to do an under over uh, twirl is what I call it. So you're doing that, but in order to get it, you want to get it back to match grip in order to, uh, I call palming it down onto uh, the drum or drum pad that you're playing on in order to get the rebound and hit the stick back up into your hand. So what you're doing is an underarm twirl pretty much uh, with that, but then you're rolling it back around using uh, typically these three fingers, so your ring finger, your middle finger, and your index finger. So you're, after you roll it around, just push it back around one more time. So your thumbs up on the uh, stick, so you're ba basically back to match grip once you're done with this. So you have to get it in the time of practically two quarter notes. So so yeah, if you practice the metronome, I recommend practice at a pretty high tempo to get it uh, started. So around this speed, I don't have a metronome with me, so I don't know what that exact tempo is. It's somewhere probably around 110 to 115. So, uh, when you put this down, you want to make sure that three things are happening. First of all, you don't put it down so hard that you lose contact and you completely roll it off. And you also don't want to damage your hand or cause pain to yourself when you're doing this. It should be pretty light. Let the accent of the drum hitting the rims uh, hit and do the work for you. Don't try and force that sound into the drum or drum pad. When you're playing, make sure that you don't uh, go like this. So when you do that, it makes a snapping motion, which you don't want. You just want it to go have that nice flat sound. So the next thing is making sure that when you put the stick down, that you do not uh, leave a small amount of room on this side, because if you do that, it won't get any spinning motion, and you won't get the momentum behind it to get it to do practically a full, this is 180, full 360 spin. <coughs> I can sh demonstrate for you all real quick. <coughs> Excuse me. If you were to leave it with this amount of space, it literally can't even do a 360 uh, spin back into your hand when you hit it. So what you have to do is 
leave about two to four inches of room off of the drum and try and hit it as close to the pad as possible in order to get that clean spin and get it in time to your hand because you don't want to hit it too quickly such as that or hit it too slow you want to get it mm -mm. I caught that you want to get it you want to get it just perfect so that uh, you can get this back to your hand in the time that you're playing it in so to show you what this looks like so you have a so notice right off of that flam, I'm going right into that twirl. So I'm almost playing the flam like this with my left. So you take that, then you just put the uh, hit in and you try and get it back to your hand in traditional grips. So this is the way it goes. So in order to practice this and get this down, I'd recommend first uh, just getting the da, da, get that motion. So if you can get that up snap motion, uh, work on how much uh, force you need to put behind the stick in order to get it back in your hand. Depends on the weight of the stick. If you're using a lightweight stick, it doesn't take much to get that stick back in your hand. Uh, these are kind of heavier sticks. These are uh, MS5 Vic Firth uh, Core Master sticks. These are a bit heavier. These are marching sticks. These will definitely take a bit of momentum to get back in your hand. I know the weight of the sticks that Top Secret uses are almost a third heavier than these sticks right here so you got to get used to the real heavy weight or, or excuse me just whatever the weight of your sticks are uh, how much momentum you need to get behind so first practice getting that so what I would do is one and two and down one and two and down so then da, 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 da. so practice those two variations and then come back to the video Okay, so now that you're back, we're going to move on to the kind of ending off part of that uh, section. So you have a tap, flam, tap, flam. These are not quite inverted flam taps. I mean, you could call them that because that's basically what they are. Inverted flam taps are weird sticking with flam taps. But these are, so you're putting a lot of emphasis and accent on those flams. So you really want to have them pop. So after the... So da 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 boom, boom da da da. Their eighth note speed. So then, uh, right after that, you drag out a seven-stroke roll. So it will sound like this. So it's not typically what you see with seven-stroke rolls at being at triplet speed. Like it's like. So think of it. So da. So like that last note is the start to a four uh, sixteenth note run. So then just put diddles on those. Then you just end it off with a left hand flam paradiddle. So all together it should sound like this. So when you play that, of course as I said, work on the momentum that you have behind the stick and make sure you make those flams pop and that you can drag out that seven cleanly. So once you get this up to speed and you can play this, uh, work on getting this up to as high of tempo that you can. Uh, the highest tempo that I believe they were playing in the video was somewhere around 120. I'm pretty sure that's what it was at. I'll have to check about that later, but it's around that speed. So pause the video, get this part nailed down, and we can move on to part two. Okay, so now that you're back for part two, we're moving on to the, in my opinion, much more complex and hard to play version, uh, or excuse me, part. So what you have right here at the start is a very simple tap, 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 tap. So tap, 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 both at the same time. So tap, 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 one and two and two. So when you're playing this, you're playing back with your left stick. So uh, going off of the last measure, switch over. So all it is to play back sticking like that is just switch, let's say I have traditional grip, just literally uh, rotate your fingers and your wrist over and you're basically playing with the stick reversed and match grip. 
So now what they do in order to get the spin, in order to do what I call a suicide drop, they have to change the grip of their hands. So I'm going to play this usual and then watch what I do differently. Alright, now I'm going to do something different. So what I did differently was I changed my grip from being traditional or just regular match grip to rotating my uh, fingers, my middle finger and index finger, on the other side of the stick to be with my thumbs, almost like you're making two mouth puppet characters, and you literally are changing your grip so that you can hold them in the webbing of your hands. It's, these sticks should be in between your four fingers. Notice that it shouldn't be both are the same. One, in this case, is always going to be different. So what you want to do is have this stick be down because when we rotate this up for the suicide drop, it needs to come so that you can get back to traditional grip. Hence why we did the back sticking part to get the stick flipped over. So when you have it uh, into this position, really try and not put uh, your fingers doing the work. Just squeeze in with uh, whatever the bones are called right after your knuckles. Uh, squeeze in with those and do that for both hands in order to get that last push because it's kind of hard to get a solid accent. I mean, it comes together when you have a full line of 10 snares doing that and it's loud, and especially on a drum that's much more loud, but you gotta really pop it. So, uh, the next step after that is to do the twirls, but first get comfortable playing that simple measure, which is da 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 da. Doesn't matter when you change your grip, as long as you can get to the, uh, I would call it webbed grip, uh, get them before you do the, I would call it the flum, when you're hitting both sticks at the same time. So change your grip right before then. So I changed pretty quickly there. You can do left or right first. Just make it not like super noticeable. Like, hey, look at my hands. I'm changing them. So just do it quickly. Do it uh, with precision and get them before you do the flop. So practice that. Pause the video and come back. Okay, so now we're ready for the final part, which is the suicide drop. So what you're doing is, uh, in my mind, kind of a, I don't know what type of twirl slash spin to call this, but I would say this is uh, getting back to a double traditional type of grip, getting to that is what the goal is out of this. So with this, I've broken down the twirl into three things. So I'll just do the twirl at full speed so you can see it. So you see, I got that, then you drop. And you're back up at ready instantly. So what you want to do is first break it down into these three steps. So watch carefully. Write this down if you need to. So first, you're taking your hand as it's still in the webbing in between all four fingers. And you have it, and you're making basically a T shape. So your arm's the main stem of the T, and then you got the cross part right here. So you're making a T, just like that, as flat as you can. Then next you're taking your index finger, rolling it under the stick, putting it up again, so then, there we go, we did a full pretty much 360. So now, the grip is in between only two fingers, that is my middle finger and my index finger. Then, you rotate it back around, and literally just let it slip back into a traditional grip. You want your stick, when it comes up, to be around uh, mouth, uh, I, I'm usually around mouth level, but you want it to be at least head level. Typically, most people will go up like around here. That's kind of wimpy, gimpy. That's 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 not good enough. You've got to get it up here in order to get enough room to drop it comfortably and grab it without dropping the stick. So, all in all, all that you're doing, rotate, rotate again with instead with your index finger, then force it back around with your middle finger and index finger back to traditional grip. So at full speed, broken down a bit. So, pause the video, come back to that, and then we'll work on the drop part. Okay, so now we're back for this. So the drop part is not that tricky. The key thing is making sure that you keep your arms as close to your body as possible. So when you drop the stick, you want the stick to come down and your arm to be comfortably resting down. So when I drop it, I don't want my arm to be out here. I don't want to be dropping it somewhere and catching it real close up here. I want it to be comfortable just like my arm is usually just like casually just standing here. My arm is down by my side, typically right below for these types of pants, but uh, for around your pocket or your waist, depending on how tall or how long your arms are. So when you drop it, coming down very comfortably, my uh, wrist 
flips around. So I, I'm drop the stick. Just like this, so you're holding it like this. Then you're literally rotating your hand, let's say like this, and like this, back around to catch it again. So I'll take that, just like that. So I'll practice that about a hundred times and you'll be as comfortable dropping and picking up your stick just like that or dropping and catching your stick excuse me so that is kind of tricky to get at first but what you as I said before the most important thing is making sure that you keep your arms relaxed and to your body so if you are look, I'll, I'll give a bad example so let's say uh, I've got a group of people around me and I'm doing some sick uh, drumstick tricks and visuals and stuff I literally go like this I hit somebody in the face nicely done let's say I do it like this the stick goes flying so now imagine that with both hands so I have them both up here I could hit two people in the face or drop both sticks I dropped one oh, excuse me without even trying to drop the stick and that's what happened so it's all in the control of your arms so pause the video, work on the drop and the spin process, break it down like I said, you, it's going to be really hard to understand, I'll just do it one more time for you. So taking this like it was right here, rotating around, all the way, then try and smoothen out that cycle to be a clean spin and drop. So when you do this, you want it to go up so it literally is in a two count, up, drop, one, two. So get that up to speed it will be like one two that wasn't that good well anyhow you get the picture so practice that come back and we'll work on the right hand okay so the right hand is pretty much exactly the same except for a few minor details so as I said before this back sticking is backwards in order to get it to that traditional grip so that when you drop it you can comfortably come back up very quickly right here so you're in traditional grip it's opposite in order to get this to fit nicely for uh, getting back to match grip with this hand to finish off the traditional grip style so it's, you're literally it's the same process except when your stick comes up it's going to be upside down or facing into the ground like a like 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 it's pointing down pretty much like that so this one's pointing up this one's pointing down so when you drop it like I said before comfortably coming down to your waist so remember these it, it can be a bit awkward but you have it it's in the webbing right here you form the T bring it back around then excuse me you have to keep your index finger up there up here so that's the steps you can break it down just think of it reverse from what you did before same steps just on the other hand going out that way rather than going out that way so, as I said before, the most important thing is not to make sure you go out like that, but keep it close and into your body. So, like I said, pointing into the ground, close into your body, make sure it's the reverse of what we did here. So, once you practice that, come back to the video, and we will work on piecing these together for a double drop. Pause the video, come back. Okay, so now that you've mastered these uh, spins, and hopefully you're ready for a double drop, uh, maybe you already practiced double dropping them a bit, what you're doing, spinning them and trying to get them to come up and in at the exact same time. So, one, so try and just do it in one count. One and two, just like that. One and two. So sometimes my right hand will slow down a bit. So you wanna try and get these as close uh, to landing at the same time in that position ready to be dropped. So there we go. So then practice dropping them at the same time. As I said before, it's key that your arms do not come out. They stay close into your body comfortably as if you were just letting them rest on your sides. So spin up, drop. So right after that, it's a very simple up and ready. And after that, you can play whatever you want. You can play something you've written. You can follow along with their music. I won't be doing many more of their music because I don't want to lean towards copyright or showing you all their music but I, I know all that show you I've linked down in the description to me playing that show so it's a key thing as I said before make sure your arms do not flare out keep them comfortable like you're resting them down on your sides so 
practice dropping both of those at the same time. And when you come back, we will work on piecing the entire thing together. Pause the video and come back. Okay, so there you have it. You know how to do these, uh, I would say, two different visuals, but pieced into one really cool visual. So you got uh, cool stick visuals, twirls, spins, stuff like that. If you have any questions or comments, uh, I can definitely address them down below, but let's try and piece this uh, together right now. So let's take it a bit slow. At, uh, one, two, three. There you have it, a bit more up tempo. Okay, so if you, as I said before, if you have any questions or comments, all it takes is to comment down below, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you want me to make more content like this, please hit uh, subscribe, please like, and please also comment uh, your opinions on these videos. Key thing is making sure, out of the three of those, you get the right momentum behind the stick, that you uh, can get this twirl to come up relatively around the same time, and you keep your arms tucked in. So, get used to playing that, and if you guys want to, you feel free to take a video of you guys uh, doing this uh, stick visual that I uh, taught you guys. You can send it to me, uh, comment down below what you all think, as I said before. Hope you all really enjoyed this video, I'm going to try and make more tutorials like this in the future. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, please subscribe for more. Thank you once again for 100 uh, subscribers, it means a lot to me, I never thought I'd really make it this far on YouTube. But I'm trying to make more content for you guys now, and keep my channel moving. See you guys in the next video, bye.